Hello, hello. Welcome back. So this week's main focus has been trying to make the world feel like you're in it. The day and night system is what makes you have to go to sleep because if you don't go to sleep, you'll die. Essentially how you normally do a sleeping system in a game is taking the lights and just dropping them really low and that's nighttime. So for now that's what we're doing. I decided that a vignette would kind of be the perfect thing to do this with. To apply that vignette to everything on the screen, I was gonna have to learn how to use shaders. I went off and there's this awesome book called The Book of Shaders. It's on the internet for free. It teaches you basically what shaders are and what they do. Now for anyone that doesn't know, shaders basically let you do math on the GPU, which is really, really fast and apply some cool effects whatever you can think of basically to the screen. Now it's pretty hard because it's a lot of math so you have to like figure out the equation for what you want to do. So this is what I set out to do. Thank god there's also this thing called shader toy. I may have found a shader that someone else had written that applies a vignette which is exactly what I wanted to do. I pasted that code in because I didn't really want to reinvent the wheel. I had to work out how to adapt it to the shader language that Godot uses and then we had this nice shader. To make the shader dim corresponding to day and night, I basically made the shader darker the later in the day it was. And as you can see, we have a bit of a strobe effect. I highly recommend that you check out Play With Versifer because they've got some great tutorials on making shaders that helped me a lot. So back to the shading system, essentially I had the problem of tying it to the time. It sounds super simple, but if you think about it, I have I made a time system that is a 24 hour clock, zero to 23, and then it loops back around. So I just made it so 23 was like the darkest and zero was the lightest. But if you think about it, that just means it's gonna go darker, 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 darker and then like full brightness at midnight, which is not what you want. So instead, I just spent a long time trying to figure out an equation to make it so that it gets lighter towards midday and then gets darker again. And basically what you can see here is the equation I came up with, which wasn't too tricky. And then that's basically what I applied to the, I think it was the alpha value of the vignette and that just made it stronger and stronger the more it was in the evening or in the morning. By the way, a cheeky subscribe would be much appreciated. Just hit 104 or something, which is super exciting. At this point, I had the brightness going properly from dark to light to dark again. So now I needed a way for it to actually impact the player. So this is where at the vital system came in. So I made another singleton, which is basically something that constantly runs, not just attached to one node. This is where I have my stamina and health and stuff like that. I jumped over into Figma. I designed a nice little UI, just some bars, basically some health bars, and use this great thing called a progress texture, which allows you to set a foreground and a background texture and then a value like a percentage and it will automatically change the size of your health bar to match it. So I've got one of those set up with the background and foreground that I designed in Figma. I have a script running on top of them that just sets the value from zero to a hundred based on what your health or your stamina is in the global singleton. Another thing you might notice is that the text that you get out of the box with it, the font looks like shit. Highly recommend Google Fonts, which is where I got the fonts that I'm using in here. And then you create a new dynamic font and that's what I'm using to show the time in game. So now you know what the time is. I connected the vital system. I applied a tick effect. So every time a second moves forward in game, change your current stats by a certain amount. And so with this tick effect, I also made sure to add skip methods. If you sleep, for example, some things like your hunger should actually keep going down. This vital controller thing will take the amount of time that's passed. You can give it any amount of time and like make you as hungry as you would have been from having eight hours pass. So that happens even when you sleep. Now, speaking of sleeping, I needed to redo the interaction system. So I went back to our old mates area 2D, added one to the player and added one to anything I want to interact with. On anything that you can interact with, you either add an interact method or some metadata that says can pick up. So the player's area, when you press E, which is our interaction key, checks if any of those types of areas are around and then either picks it up or tries to interact on it. Also, thanks to metadata, which you can set on objects, anything that can be picked up can set some metadata on itself to give a little prompt. So in this case, we have the water bottles, which prompt you to pick them up. <laughs> and then the sleeping bag, or in this case, our cardboard boxes, which prompt you to go to sleep. When you then interact on them, it fires the sleeping control which advances time. It advances time and advancing time because we have that connected to our vital system will make your hunger or in this case your thirst go down but your stamina will start back again. As you can see with how it is now, your stamina goes down across the day 
and then jumps back up after you've slept and your thirst at the moment just goes down. So we're gonna have to add a way for the player to get some water in. Apart from that, that's been the progress for this week. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, like. I'll see you in the next one.